Hi, Mr. Crawford. This is what I did for some of my self-guided learning guides. I built a custom map for the game Call of Duty World at War Zombies, and I'm going to show you what I've done. Oops. So if I open the launcher. So the main application used for actually building the map is called Radiant. It's sort of like the 3D modeling or type stuff you'd use. And that's what you'd actually create the map in. So let me show you that first. So within Radiant, you can create standard blocks like this. Give that texture. Like so. And if I do Control Tab, I can move it around, change its size and such. So this is how you'd build your map. I change if I make the grid smaller, you can get thinner, wider pieces of wall or something. As well as being able to create cylinders and all that stuff in the in the primitives over here. So let me show you my map. So this is my map. If you haven't noticed, the first thing you probably notice is all the pink squares and the cheese textures. So I was inspired by a map made by another person. Um, his name is Zombie Killer, and he's a user on the forums. And he built a cheese-themed bots map like this. A bots map meaning it's pretty much just one main room with a couple little side rooms or something. It's not really a full map because this is my first one. So I was inspired by him. So I made my own version. This is completely from scratch. It, I did not use any of his assets or anything like that. And yeah. So. the Like I said, the other thing you'll probably notice is all the pink squares. Those are the spots where the zombies can go. Because this is a zombie game. So you'd have to kill all the zombies and such and survive as long as you can. So the pink squares are the areas where the zombies are allowed to walk. So as like that's why there's no pink squares near or around any of the walls or machines. The only reason there's one inside this wall is because that eventually that opens to a door and this would lead them up the staircase into this other room. So each of these is a Bible door. So once you kill enough zombies you would you could spend your points on this door. So if I open it, you'll see you have basically you add these KVPs and that can link the doors to something. So like this is the this is the doors, the a strip brush model. So, like, each of these, like, the strip vector makes it move 62 units to the left, I think, this one. And then the target name is going to be what, the, what basically, the name of this door. So when the trader calls it, it moves it 62 to the left. So, like, if I click the trader, there you go. So, these are the commands. So, zombie door is going to make it recognized as an openable door. The magic door is the effect used when it moves. The zombie cost is how much the door. There's o there's only certain amounts you can pick, only ones that were programmed into the game. The target, obviously, is what you're calling, which would be the actual door frame. And the class name is just the object, a use trader. So I have four of those open each of these doors. These on the wall are Bible guns. So this this can't, this come, these come pre-scripted with the game, though. You just have to add them to your map. So that's that. This is a dog spawner, so in certain rounds, higher in the game, they start spawning, they're more powerful and they're harder to kill and such, and they can spawn out of the corners of this room where these little red cubes are. So, now inside each of these rooms, I have another door here. This one's hidden though, and I'll show you about that later. And I have a, I have a mystery box location, which basically is, if you buy it, you can get a random weapon, and it costs 950 points. The point is, you might get a good weapon, you might get a bad weapon, so it's not as reliable as buying one from, let's say, over there. And there's a perk. So each of these give you a special power name, like Speed Coal allows you to reload faster. And then there's ones around here, like, that's, I said, another bot station, Double Tap means you shoot faster. So one over here, Juggernaut gives you more health. And then the last one over here, this is the power room. So hit, you have to figure out which room obviously has the power, which you might get first try, you might get fourth try, you don't know, because until you actually know the map. So 
you have to buy the power you have to buy the power door and turn on the power before you can use any of the perks so like that this is quit revive so this in multiplayer would allow you to revive your friends faster so if they die because basically once they get hit by a zombie a certain amount of times they go down so they just they can't move and they just kind of sit there on the floor and someone can come revive them before they totally die out which is like 30 seconds so you have to be pretty quick so this allows you to get faster or in solo it allows you to revi you get three revives yourself and then the machine disappears now the cool thing about that is that was actually not programmed into the game i had to, i used a i used a tutorial but i still had to do i still did it all myself and i learned quite a bit from that because that was not introduced until the later games so you have to code that in yourself and then these doors in here are each triggered by a hidden stall in the map so this is the first one here so if i pull up the kvps on this you'll see it calls speed trigger it is called speed trigger and it is a damage trigger meaning instead of having to push walk up and push whatever key you've selected as your use key to pay for it you have to find it and just shoot it so like that one opens the speed cola door which is this one so it'll open this little door oops it'll open this door as you can see how it's got the target name of speed door and then behind it are more hidden perks this looks like the other juggernaut but but it's actually a perk from a newer game i believe this one is deadshot dactry which gives your guns a laser scope the reason being you can't actually put it in your map because the like the people that get the models i don't own the newer game so i had to get the models from somewhere else but they can't distribute them in a raw form because it's copyrighted material but they can have it show as this until you enter the game don't know why but it's how it is and then on the roof here i have these hidden cheese wheels so now there's three of those hidden around the map too there's one there one down here and one more hidden it's over here around the corner and outside here those are also using damage triggers the difference being those had to use quite a bit of custom stripping actually all the doors had to use quite a bit of custom stripping and i'll show that in a second so basically if i can see it so this calls this calls secret tr secret underscore trigger so which means it's going to go in it's going to call my script i made for called secret underscore trigger and then if it all three of them are shot you have to shoot all three this hidden door will open here leading to up to a secret room now on the wall here is basically the best done in the game and it's pretty cheap and this is the pack punch machine now once you enter the game you'll see my custom skin i made for it it just doesn't show in the editor and it actually looks really cool and this basically just makes your gun more powerful and it shoots lasers and things like that these perks on the walls were are supposed to be different they were supposed to be hidden they were supposed to be perks from the newest game black light which is like just came out last year and they were supposed to be like obviously like you have to code them in yourself and such because they were never built for this engine or game but i could never get them to work so those aren't actually in the final map they're just in this uh in the editor because i was just playing with them a little while ago and then there's two more of these skulls which call each call a strip to open that door like you can see over here again sorry like if i if i click on that like this one this one calls the strip speed underscore trigger and i'll sh like i said i'll show those off after so now if we go outside around the corner of the zombie spawn points this isn't what they actually look like it's just more of just for stale but this would be where they would spawn out of the ground. You have to do it out of sight because unless you want to code in custom animations for them actually climbing out of the ground, they'll just appear there. And then these, like I said, the purple squares are where they can watch. So they'll follow this path right up to the window where they will attach. See this white cube here? This white cube, as soon as they reach that cube, they'll start pulling off these barriers. So you can basically board these up by using your use button and that would make it harder for them to climb through because they have to remove all the barriers first and then they and then there's an animation and they would climb over and see this wall this green specifies what the where the wall is so they'd climb over that and walk into the room there's four of those now what else did i want to show you oh yeah in the middle this is just the player spawn point for single player and then these four little red squares around it are the ones for multiplayer and oh yeah let me walk you through the rest of these so if you want each hidden stall opens one of these side doors and each of them opens a secret perk one of them opens dead shot daffy like i said and that gives a laser sight to your gun 
one opens um, stamina, which means you run really fast. One opens mule kit, which lets you have a third gun, because normally you're limited to two. And that'd be very useful in higher rounds as such, because you can run out of bullets very easily. And the last one opens... Sorry, I just can't, I can't even remember. Sorry, I did this multiple weeks ago for my inquiry. Um, stamina. I can't. Oh, PhD flocker. Which means if you get an explosive weapon from the mystery bot, such as a rocket launcher or you want to like using grenades and stuff a lot, you can't cause damage to yourself. Where normally you can with an explosive weapon. If you shoot it too close, you can kill yourself. So this negates that damage. As well as, it would be useful on other maps for this, but not so much on this map. You can't take fall damage either, so if you, if you were, like, if you, if your best area of the map where you can run around the zombies easier, it has a long drop below it, that might be useful. Yeah, all four of these perks on the side, like I said, are from later games, so those all had to be coded in customly. And I can show you that code in a minute. But that code was not 100% written by me. I used a tutorial for that, although it still took quite a bit of time because the tutorial was written fairly badly and there was a lot of troubleshooting. Probably like half of the like 25, 30 hours it took to make this, yeah, I know it's a lot, um, was just troubleshooting. So let me show you. I'll show you my asset manager first. This is what you'd have to use. Or... Assets. No, it's not it. It's source data. My textures. So this is what you use to import the textures. So basically, I, I made all the textures myself in Photoshop. Some of them, like the cheese texture on the walls, I converted, I used the Google Images and edited it and converted it myself. Um, and I made sure they were all, none of them were stock images or anything, that stuff. So each of these, so basically you have to you add, you put the file name in here, because I had to convert these to DDS files, which I then edited in Photoshop, and like the pack punch ones I made totally myself, as well as the camos, which I'll show you after. So basically, once you do that, you you select type of material and stuff, and you can import it and convert it to the IWI file, the raw file the game uses, and you drag, once you you have to move it around to the right spot and such, and then it'll appear in the editor like this as a texture, which you can then manipulate, move around, and use on your items. So I have lots of these. Like I said these pack punch ones are my custom textures I made myself. I'll show you those in the game because they don't appear in the editor. And the camos are custom textures I made for on the gun after you pack punch it. So that's that. I never used a FETS editor because that's much more advanced. You have to actually, you, it's basically for making your own gun animations and reload animations and special effects for the map and such. And the converter, it, the converter I used this one because that one's kind of that one's slightly broken, so I just used this one instead. So now I wanted to show you my code. So if I go into the maps file, you can see these are my these are the codes I made for myself. So if I open these. Okay, you can see, so these were made partially using a tutorial, but I had to edit them all and figure out what everything did myself, especially since this one was the one that followed the tutorial, but the other ones I made myself and I had to edit them because, well, obviously, because they don't all use three triggers, like that one needs to shoot you to shoot three items to open the door, and I can understand completely how it works. So basically, starting from the beginning, it sets self.teddybear.number to zero, so it creates a number and sets it to zero. And and runs these three and runs these three scripts, which are here, here and here. So it runs these scripts, and then it finds entity secret underscore bear, which would be the three each of the cheese. One would be called secret underscore bear, one secret underscore bear two, and secret underscore bear three. The reason they're called bear is because that was just the default one. Because normally people hide teddy bears around their map, because that's how the actual map developers did it originally. So then it's showing. Once it's triggered, so once the damage trigger is shot and it's triggered, it'll delete itself. It'll wait, and then it's going to sh and then it's going to unlock the door 
and print and print in bold so on the screen it's going to appear in text you've found a secret cheese wheel it's going to delete the bear then just before it just leave the trigger it's going to wait 0 0.1 seconds then it's going to set the number to and then it's going to add one to self teddy bear number so and then the same thing happens for each of these each one adding the number to three and then at the end if the number eventually equals three so second the number hits three this strip is going to run and it's going to find door secret underscore doors 01 and it's going to find the player size and make sure it plays the sound for all players so i'm going to move the door a certain amount then it's going to wait a second and print in bold well done you've opened the cheddar punch door which is what i said like the pack punch i've retextured it and renamed it the cheddar punch because my map is cheese related and then it's going to delete itself after it floats off because that one floats up in the up. so if i open these oops, oops. If I open these, so if I open these, these ones I edited myself as well. So this one sets the number to zero and only runs the one command, obviously, because that's the only command I need. And then once, and then once you've shot, once you've shot dtap underscore bear, or sorry, it's gonna set it to dtap underscore bear and dtap underscore trigger. It's gonna wait for trigger to be same as last time. It's gonna wait for the trigger to be damaged. Then it's gonna delete the trigger. It's going to unlock the door, and it's going to print in bold, you've found a secret skull, because in the doors are opened by the four skulls around the map instead of the cheese wheels. And it's going to delete itself and such and set the number to plus one. This time, though, it only waits for a number of one, because obviously there's only one for each door, and that's going to print, well done, you've opened a hidden door. So, those are, that's that. Now, what else did I want to show you? Okay, now I'm going to actually open the game for you. And so I can show you my map. Sorry, I'm still going to use this keyboard. game Sorry, it just takes a couple seconds to do it up. There we go. Okay, so if I load my mod... And then I have to manually type this in, because... You have to make a full custom menu and actually edit the game, and that's much harder to do. So, let's put this in. I'd like to do that for my next map, because I'm planning on making a much larger one over the summer with some of my friends. Activision. So. <laughs> Sorry about the lighting. It's really bright. It wasn't expected to be that bright. It was sort of, I turned the brightness way too high, and then if I turn it down for some reason, it was way too low. I don't know if it's glitched or something, but... It's the best I could get. I can turn it down a little from here. So, this is my map. Like you can see, the there's the speed pole, there's quick arrive. Such. And I can open all the doors all the way off because I have I've set myself 500,000 points. So I'm just trying to show it off. So I'm invincible. Okay, so now as you can see, there's the perks and such. I turn on the power. Oh, These all work 100% fine. Living the fast life, that's the way I do. These all work exactly as I was intended, as well as the box. Yeah, partner, I'm thirsty. Show all these. Show they work. I can show off their features after. I'm always in a Okay, so now that I have all the main perks, I can show you the hidden things. So like here's the actual wheel. 
See, you found a secret cheese wheel. And then to add the number by one. Out. Go to the next one. Found a secret cheese wheel. Add the number by one. Now to find the third one, you have to shoot the skull. So in this door, like I said, there's a huge cheese whopper. And the next cheese wheel. Well done, you've opened the cheddar punch door. Now, like this, as I said, this is what I really wanted to show you. I retouched this myself. Cheddar punch, cheese up your firepower. Retouched it all. And put it down in. This one doesn't look quite as good. Because the texture isn't made to cover the whole gun. If I, let me see if I can show another one. Freak bag. Let's see what this is. Yeah, but as you'd be able to see, I'm making some freak meat stew. Oh, the grenade actually up? activated this trigger, which is a stole to another door. There's also one here. Last one is most well hidden, and it also has the it also has meal kit behind it, the best perk, dead. so obviously it is. And the machine. As I said, this one's stamina, makes you run faster. And that is the Black Ops texture, which is why, like I said, it didn't show it in the editor. And there's meal kit. Mule kit also had to be really had to have a lot of custom coding because the game was not built to handle three guns. So, but like you can see, three guns, and you have to actually recode pack punch as well because it's not set for three guns. So it just automatically assumes, like mo on a lot of maps, if it's done improperly, the machine will just steal the third gun because it has no idea what's going on. These guys look really confused because I'm in invincible mode. But in normal, normally they work fine. As I said, these are the wall guns, so they have a fancy animation, so if you buy them, the gun comes out of the wall and stuff. So if I turn off broad mode, I can show you that custom rival made. So, so it, gives you, it gives you a really powerful gun to get rid of all the zombies. And gives you a chance to come back that like that. And if I buy that three times, the machine will disappear. As well as if I buy the box many times, it'll move around. But you have to buy it like ten times, so that might be a little too much for this video. That's more or less my map. Um, some things I would like to change are like this texture out here. You can kind of see it's a cracker. Kinda. But basically what happened was I didn't add any light orbs outside, I only added them in these main rooms. So it, the texture's not lit properly, so it doesn't show up very well, you just kind of vaguely see it. I'd also, like I said, like, really fix my lighting. And I would have liked to have these perks work. These were the ones that were supposed to be the ones from the newer games. One of them does- one of them shows up and works. Maybe. See, one of them lets you buy it, but it doesn't do anything. And the other two don't work. So that's basically my map. It's put a lot of coding, more than you'd expect. I actually I got lots of support from some users on the forum zombiemodding.com, which is what they which is what they do. A lot of people, because these are all fan-made maps. The, all the official maps are very different, obviously. But these are actually the official tools the real developers use to make the maps. You can make more... Like, as you can see, most of my stuff is very boxy because I didn't make my own models and such. Because those can't be made in this. Those you have to actually don't make in Maya, which is like a whole other project in itself, trying to use Maya. So you, you could make your own objects in Maya, import them in here as prefabs, and then you would have... And then you could have much nicer looking things so it wouldn't be as boxy, the actual map. But... Yeah, that's that. Um, that's a couple things I was going to say. Oh, right, back to the collaboration thing. So I collaborated with lots of people on this online forum. If I go there. 
So they have a live, they have a chat, and I actually didn't know you're not supposed to ask for help in it, but I met some really nice guys, and they really helped me through a lot of my problems and pointed me some, to some good resources for making a map. And one of them actually even showed me their in-development maps, which is very cool. They have a lot of really custom scripted things, like a full Easter egg, like mine has a couple little Easter egg -y hidden things, but they're just little, like I said, like you can shoot the things and doors open and stuff, but his is like a full thing, like you have to, like, like there's dialogue from a player trying to do it, you have to like throw grenades at certain things, then you have to like get a certain amount of kills with a certain gun, then you have to fill a, get a certain amount of kills in this area, then you have to like, you know, like a, like a full-on little mini campaign -y thing that's very cool. Like, one, you have to find a little hidden hidden bottle around the map, and and you have to, so one player has to knife it, and the other person has to catch it and stuff, and it's just, it's very cool. So, that's that. Um, that's my project. So, yeah, thanks for listening. <laughs>